there are like three calls that a parent doesn't want to get. My child is hurt, my child is in prison, or my child has been suspended. I get a call from my child's school to come and pick my child up. He's being sent home. He was in circle time. The teacher assistant went to go pick him up and he hit her hand. They said that was basically an assault on the teacher. Trizel Underwood's son is four years old and goes to pre-K in the Austin School District. He's been suspended three times. Underwood asked that we not name his school. I picked him up the first time, and I picked him up the second time, and I think the third call, I was mad. I didn't want this to be another young African-American boy labeled instantly. School is this place that's leading him, I, I feel, to prison. I, I do have a fear that a lot of our kids are going to this school to prison pipeline. In Texas elementary schools last year, there were 26,183 out-of-school suspensions for students in second grade or younger. Suspensions have a disproportionate impact on Black students, who make up 13% of the elementary school student body, but account for 47% of the suspensions. According to the Department of Education, young students who are suspended are as much as 10 times more likely to drop out of high school, experience academic failure, and face incarceration than those who are not. Hoping to disrupt the school-to-prison pipeline, the Texas legislature is currently considering three bills that would ban out-of-school suspensions for pre-K through second grade. Raising the question, if suspensions are banned, what are teachers supposed to do instead? This is of great concern to teachers like Hannah Terry, who campaigned for a suspension ban in her school district that passed earlier this year. It is definitely not enough to just ban it because my fear is that if it's banned without proper training and resources and people are just going to give a different name to the same thing. State Representative Helen Giddings is the author of one of the state bills. Her bill requires that schools come up with research-based alternatives to suspensions. If we're not going to be able to suspend students, then we need to have alternative measures to deal with behavioral problems. We all want our students to be able to go to school and to be able to learn in an atmosphere that is free of disruption. Her bill wasn't prioritized to be heard by the House before tonight's midnight deadline, so the bill died. But an identical bill could be heard in the Senate as early as tomorrow. The third doesn't suggest alternatives, but bans suspensions anyway. It passed in the House on Tuesday and is now on its way through the Senate. Morgan Craven, director of the School to Prison Pipeline Project at Texas Appleseed, believes that even if the state doesn't agree on an alternative, out-of-school suspensions should still be eliminated. We can't keep doing something that we 100% know hurts children. There's no question that suspensions are bad. There's no reliable research that says that they are good. And so we have to stop doing what we know is, is bad for kids.